So this is a PV diagram. Draw, draw a picture of this guy. Here is volume, right? Here is pressure. Okay. And and there's nothing tricky about this. If you're thinking about, shut up the system that we were talking about last time. Okay. Remember that that was a piston. That was a piston with a little plunger, kind of a thing like this, right? Wait, a cylinder with a little plunger. Piston and plunger are synonymous, right? There we go, right? And we're talking about the pressure of this gas. We're talking about the volume of this gas, right? Now, here is a little trick. Isn't this axis here directly proportional to the position of the little piston? And literally, if, the, if it does this, Right? That means that we increase the volume and this means that we decrease it. So this is piston moves out. This is piston moves in. Whoops. In only has one I. Yeah? Okay. Piston moves out, piston moves in. In fact, you could look at this thing and go, gee, uh, here and moving out, we, we more than doubled the volume. We, we, yeah? Okay. So the question might be, if we really pursued this, Normally, when you give it more volume and you have the same amount of gas, and we always have the same amount of gas, right, in these things, how could you possibly increase the volume without having the pressure drop? Shouldn't the pressure drop? Pressure should be, if the temperature stayed the same and we, we increased the volume by more than two, it should drop, like, to less than half, shouldn't it? Something like that? Right, so how is that possible? It's possible to do this. It takes a little bit of doing. What do we do? Yes, it has to do with temperature, which is the one thing that's not labeled on here, right? We could make it like a three-dimensional graph, but that would blow our minds, right? Okay, so there's a third axis, there's a third thing to think about here, and that is what the temperature, you weren't in trouble after all? Nope. I was there and I worked for an hour's worth of slave time. Hours worth of slave time. Slave time, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. There you go. So the, the, the thing that's missing here is temperature. In order to do this properly, you actually have to increase the temperature, right? To make up for the, the greater volume that you have poking around in here. So the other thing that's going on here is temperature, and we can do PV equals NRT. If we know the N, we can read P and V off of these things if they give us units, and then we can figure out T, can't we? Yeah? In general, though, T is equal to, T is equal to PV over NR, right? So as P and V, the product of P and V gets bigger and bigger, right? The temperature gets bigger. So temperature increase generally is this way. This is hot, this is cold, right? Doesn't that make sense? For a given amount of gas, it occupies little volume with little pressure when it's cold, and a lot of volume with a lot of pressure when it's hot, yeah? Okay? So, so there we have it, right? So this is pressure, this is volume, and the axes change in volume, change in pressure, right? So this is called, and then we're going to add a, a word here. This is isobaric. These processes are isobaric, right? Iso means the same. Baric means... No, that's isothermal. Isobaric. What stays the same? Yeah, the pressure stays the same. What is an instrument that measures pressure? It's called a barometer. There we go. So it means isobaric, right? It just means the same pressure process, right? This is an isobaric compression. This is an isobaric expansion. So obviously if, we, if the volume increases, it's an expansion. Huh? And if it gets smaller, it's a compression. So these are big words, right? If your parents ask you tonight, well, what did you learn in physics? Because they always do, right? Just say, well, we were talking about isobaric compressions and isobaric expansions. Yeah? Okay. Isobaric compression, isobaric expansion, we already said, involves letting heat flow into the gas and raising the temperature, right? Isobaric compression actually is the reverse. In order to do this and not have the pressure increase, you've got to cool it down. Put ice on it. Yeah? Okay. So there they are. And then, and then here's your trivia for the day. When you see weather maps, the weather maps often have little lines like this. Yeah? 
Those are isobars. They are points on the map whose blank is all the same. Pressure. The pressure. There are places where the pressure is all the same. Isn't that cool? Yes. Okay. And so wind tends to blow perpendicular to the isobars. Yes. From high pressure to low pressure. Yes. Yes. This makes sense. Doesn't this make sense? The wind tends to blow that way. Now, sometimes there's inertia in the wind, so it'll, it'll be like, whoa, can't quite follow that path. But generally, it does that, right? So here's the Columbia River Gorge, right? This, this deep valley. When the isobars are like this, like this, right? In the gorge, like there's some system moving through. This is, uh, this is high pressure. This is low pressure. What's going on in the gorge? They, first off, they stack up like that because the mountains kind of tend to make things stack up, right? They pile up against the mountains, weather systems do, right? And then the, you've got this incredible gradient in pressure. So what's going on in the gorge? People are windsurfing in the gorge, correct? Yes? They're, they're going 50 miles an hour on these little boards. That's what, holy cow, yeah? Okay, so there are people that have, there, there used to be a weather service where they had barometers all up and down the gorge. And whenever there was a particular signature of, of pressure drop in that direction, there was a paging service that would page people, right? And you'd be in an important meeting and you'd be like, oh, I've got to get this. Oh, that's important. I've got to go home. I've got to take care of this. You know, they go home, they get their wetsuit on, off they go, right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, there you go, right? A text message, important. Ungent, send heap, okay? ISO bars, why did I tell you that? Because it's cool. All right, uh, what else do we need? Isobaric expansion compression, we already know this, right? Oh. Um, this is positive work. Yeah, this is negative work. So we're going to tie this all into the whole work Q thing, delta thing. Yeah? Okay. So when the piston moves out, that's positive work. When the piston moves in, that's negative work by the gas, right? We're doing work on the gas, so it's negative work by the gas. Bless you. ISO means same and barrack means pressure. Yes, it does. So let's look at some other things, right? Uh, we could do this and we could do that, right? Do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. What's going on there? Yeah, hey, hey, there we go, right? Coric apparently means volume. I just looked it up. I, I, I never heard that word till I looked it up. But I figured I ought to have a word for it, right? I used to say ISO volume. Yeah. So here it is. And the pressure is just going through the roof. But is the piston moving at all? No. No, the piston doesn't move. So although something's happening to the gas, the pressure is going up and up and up and up. So what's the other variable? What, how can you increase the gas, the pressure without changing the volume? Temperature is going through the roof, right? In fact, the absolute temperature of this thing, I, don't, I mean, that's like, that thing is like eight times as high. It's eight times. So if it started at 50 kelvins at the top, it's 400 kelvins, right? We could do simple things like that. The only way to get eight times the pressure is to get eight times the temperature. And by temperature, we don't mean stupid temperature like Celsius. We mean Kelvin's absolute temperature, right? Okay. So um, example of this, isochoric uh, pressurization. What do we call it? Isochoric pressurization. This line right here, right? An example of this. You put your Tupperware in the microwave. You don't crack the lid. You turn it on for five minutes and the pressure goes... Right, and eventually what's kind of funny is that some Tupperware gets this like nuclear death grasp on the, the lids can like, as they distort, grab tighter and tighter. And I've seen actually people, and the plastic kind of gets soft, and so a, a Tupperware that's kind of flat can turn into this like round thing, right? The plastic is being softened by the microwaves and the lid has like got this nuclear hold on the bottom of it, right? And it just goes whoop and puffs up like a giant tick, right? And then... <laughs> I've seen that, and it's like run, because those things when they blow can just shatter that glass thing underneath. Like, holy cow, right? You know, generally just turn it off. But maybe don't if you got a puffer billy in there. Maybe don't open the door right away. You know, just kind of wait for it to kind of pufferize. And then the funny here's the funny thing: if a little bit of steam escapes, right? If some of the air escapes at that point, then when it cools down, it stays sealed sometimes, right? And then it just goes. <laughs> and like shrink wraps the lid right onto the food. Yeah, we've seen all these things, right? Okay. So those processes are isochoric. How much work does an isochoric